Thank you. Uh, good evening to everyone in the US and good morning to those from Asia and Europe. It gives me immense pleasure to be part of this dialogue amongst all the eminent dignitaries present here today. As TV debates and social media are raging on what is happening around one country, we are here to discuss a topic which is not just of global importance, but of immense relevance as well. We are here to discuss the future of US-Asia relationship against the backdrop of a waning socioeconomic prowess of the US. It is undeniable that America is in a very critical stage of a new world order that is getting created. The dollar is competing against the omnipresent yuan. Smaller regions are getting stronger by joining hands to pursue economic integration. And public sentiment is changing in the face of continuation of America First policies by the Biden administration. So what does that mean for the US-Asia relationship? Before we explore that, we need to understand whether the US has indeed weakened over the last half century and the United States has dominated the world economics for most part of the post-Cold War era. The globalization connected the world through the flow of goods, services, and manpower across the borders. But for the last decade or so, we are seeing a steady decrease in the US preeminence in the world geopolitical and economic rankings on account of a number of reasons. It could have started with two unpopular wars after 9-11 attacks. Back then, America had given a world sentiment with claims of WMD and My Way or the Highway Stance. Hope had come in the form of the Obama, Obama administration, but beyond the initial euphoria and brilliant speeches, its impact did not create any significant waves of change. And the election of Trump administration, with its America First policies crafted to drive investments into the US, especially in manufacturing, openly saw the rest of the world getting restless. This was exacerbated by deficit spending, its geopolitical overreach, and its increasingly active stance to unilaterally decide on conflicts or to go solo on world affairs. At the end of the globe, an increasingly richer and assertive China was making a clear mark on the socio-economic landscape of the world. Even recently, America lost a major opportunity to step up to a world leadership role in fighting COVID and the void between the East and the West even got deeper. All this could paint a dark picture for America, but there is hope in the form of education sector. Education was most affected by the pandemic, which totally disrupted the status quo. The post-pandemic, the education world has changed dramatically. Especially when we look at the countries in Asia, where students have not been able to attend face-to-face -face classes on the campus for more than 24 months, and classrooms have morphed into virtual classrooms, and few of them are making it through the hybrid classes. But slowly the world is opening up. For example, students in countries like Philippines and India have recently joined back to school after a long gap. And a shift in paradigm, somewhat shift, seems to be beneficial for American education. How is that? Well, American universities have always acted like magnets for students across the globe looking at higher studies due to numerous factors such as academic excellence innovation ecosystem, cultural diversity, etc. That pull of the American universities has become stronger for the brighter Asian students because of country's solid reputation offering research-driven higher education programs. As for the QS World Rankings 22, five of the top 10 universities and 26 of the top 100 universities are from the US. Moreover, U.S. businesses put an emphasis on allowing international students who have American education credentials the ability to work in the U.S. after they graduate. For Asian students, they feel the universities in the U.S. 
give them a better competitive edge as compared to universities in other regions. So what is it that America can do to change the narrative? Well, one thing I can think of is respecting diversity can and be more welcoming. Not to miss the fragmented or scattered nature of US education, which works as a boon for them as the students get the opportunity to explore various tools, technologies, curriculum, etc., and see what works best for them. Coming back to the US Asia Pacific ties, America still considers ASEAN as a prime destination for investments in the Indo Pacific region. According to a recent news published in the Financial Times, over the next two years, the GDP in Asia will rise faster than in the US or Europe strengthening its position as the largest and the fastest growing economic bloc. It is expected to rise to 39 trillion in 2023, exceeding the 34 trillion for the Americas and 26 trillion for the Europe. America is still considered as the most preferred hotspot by the students applying for higher studies and professionals from seeking uh, opportunities from across the globe. So as per the estimate created by the US Department of Commerce, in 2019, international students contributed 44 billion to the US economy. That year, the amount of money the US government spent to help COVID vaccines was almost equivalent to the amount incurred by Chinese students on the American education. However, given the US-China tussle, there has been a varying interest among some Asian students to consider alternative destinations for their further studies. According to Common App, fewer Chinese students applied for American universities in 2021, representing a drop of 18% compared mm -hmm. with the previous year cycle. So the rising cost of US higher education, visa issues, delays, travel restrictions, increase in anti-Asian racism, and the rising tensions between the US and China are some of the key factors for drop in application numbers among aspiring students. However, there has been an overall increase in the number of international applications, thus a shift in the focus of recruiting students from other countries as well, acts as a boon for the United States. So in 2019, 2020 academic year, 35% of the international students seeking enrollments to the US originated from China, 18% from India, and 5% from South Korea, and 3% from Saudi Arabia. Though there has been a decline in the total number of Indian students pursuing an education, the US remains a favorite destination for studying abroad. As for ASEAN countries, there are approximately 60,000 students studying in the United States. As far as Singapore is concerned, there are 3,500 Singaporean students studying in the US. So given the fact that the US is losing its stance in the global arena for all social political reasons, however, it is unlikely to significantly impact its capital markets or chasing of the American dreams. And when we talk about position in the education sector, it is still the most preferred place for students looking to study abroad. Also, considering the impact of the current crisis situation in Ukraine and other European wars, a lot of aspiring students would shift their focus from some European countries to the US. So in conclusion, the US and Asia will have their own issues ongoing, but the US continues to be positioned as a strong destination for higher education and shall remain so in the future for the next few decades. Thank you very much.